Now you know everything about our 1401, but next to us is another awesome machine, the PDP-1, that's maintained by another team, so I don't know so much about it, but Lyle, hid, hiding somewhere, is the master of the PDP-1. Good morning, Lyle. Good morning, Mark. Right, and uh, so you have been restoring this thing actually before the 1401, right? So that what that started yes, before yes, we did. Yes, you read the, the label on my shirt here, and I'll actually tell you the dates. PDP-1 was built by a company named Digital Equipment Corporation, which we typically call DEC. Right, and it's PDP-1's their first machine ever, That's right? right. PDP-1 was their first computer, but they didn't start with computers. Uh, they made logic modules. And uh, the logic modules uh, were ands and ors and flip-flops, and they sold them as individual products. The engineers at DEC said, hey, we built modules, we can build a computer. And the uh, and management and their venture capital people said, don't do computers, it's not a good idea. And, and so uh, when they built the computer, they called it not a computer, but a PDP. It's a program data processor not a computer. Uh, from, and they used the modules that they manufactured to make the computer. And, 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 and they, once again the date was about? And the, and the, date, of the, the date of design was 1959. Ben Gurley was the, the chief engineer who designed it. And he designed the whole computer in three months. Uh, so same time as the 1401 actually. Yeah, yes, maybe there, just a little bit later. Very similar time frame to the 1401, but with a very different orientation. What 1401 was designed by IBM as a business machine that was going to replace their unit record equipment. Yeah, you cannot multiply or divide to save its life, right? That's right, and it's not very fast. Right. This machine was designed as a, a, a scientific machine. Mm -hmm. So this was an 18-bit word machine. Uh, probably the most impressive thing on the front of the PDP-1 is this control panel, right. which uh, has lots of uh, lights. For those of us who level computers, uh, we call them blinking lights machines, Yes. because they, uh, uh, we have the ability to enter programs in through the front panel and we can look and see what's going can. on. Matter of fact, the cool thing about the lights on the PDP-1 is almost every flip-flop in the machine is wired to a light. And here we have a, uh, a paper tape reader and we have uh, a paper tape punch. So this is a paper tape. Um, DECFA had very interesting paper tapes, matter of fact. They used fan fold paper tape instead of rolls of paper tape. Uh -huh. It's 10 characters to the inch on a tape. So it's not very dense. Yeah. All right, can we turn it on? Sure. Little button. Blinking lights, yeah. All right, okay, so can we make it wiggle? So we already have uploaded in the software for the music. Oh, because it's core? So it's you had it from last session? So yes, we actually have all the demonstrations loaded in the machine ahead of time so that when we do demonstrations, we... Oh, that's cheating. Yes, are you, are yes, you going to load it's, one it's, for me? It's wonderful. <laughs> we load a program in. Yeah, yeah, so I, 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 I don't want to cheat here. We'll, I want we'll the... load Space War in. How does that sound? What? We'll load Space War in when we get to that point, right? Uh, okay. The thing about that machine is that the best programs on them w were written by those smart MIT students after hours, right? And one of my favorite is the music program. Can, can you run it for us? Yes, of course. So everything comes from the machine itself, right? No... <laughs> That's right. Actually, if you look at the music is generated with these four program flags. Uh, one, two, three, and four, and the program can turn them on and off. Okay, from uh, so what what the software does is turns each of these on and off at the appropriate time and creates a tone. And wires are run from each of the lights uh, through a resistor and a capacitor just to filter it a little bit, and then to a stereo amp. It's a period stereo amp. And yeah, 
a speaker is hidden somewhere, right back there. There's there's an amp and speakers. Next one, we turn we dim the lights out because uh, we're going to finally see that beautiful uh, monitor. I call it a vector monitor or whatever that is a graphics monitor. It is. So uh, snowflakes, right? So we'll play uh, snowflake. So let's uh, get to the snowflake program. Off we go. Same thing that that's that's a one of the smart students at MIT that really does. But we don't know who wrote this. Uh, really? We've done all kinds of research trying to find who wrote this, and uh, folks who were actually there don't know who wrote it. So we're going to have to well, let's let, let's hope let's hope he watches the YouTube video and that, that, that has happened on on the Alto. Is that no? We were looking at an unknown cartridge, and the guy said, "Oh, this is my cartridge." Oh, that would be great. Oh, we would love that. That would be we'll terrific. See. Ah, that's, that's, who wrote Snowflake. that's awesome. But the, the monitor in itself is awesome. How large is it? It's fairly large. It's a 19-inch tube. Okay. So and resolu three, resolution the, is the resolution is 1024 by 1024. Oh, that's why it's so beautiful. And in 1959, in 1959, that's just crazy. And down here, the blinky lights for the X Y coordinates. That's correct. <laughs> so th this stuff is full of electronics. Light pen. It's a light pen. And yeah. interestingly enough, it uses fiber optics. Gee, well, we'll go into more detail with that later. And then it has, it's full of electronics, right? It has this. Yes, yeah, so the side you're looking at is the, is the logic for the uh, digital to analog circuits, and then the power supplies, which right. you're looking at right now. And th that, that one was a. A bear to restore it was the most difficult part it of the restoration. Was, it was a bear to restore, yes. And it has this weird phosphor with the, with the the short short time scale, which is white, and long time scale, which is uh, yes, which is yellow, like a radar screen. It is a radar screen. Oh, so you're absolutely right on. Uh, that is, this is a P7 phosphor, which means that the the initial uh, electron beam makes it go uh, blue, white, and then it has this yellow green uh, persistence that stays later. Yeah, I think we, in, in late, a, later in, in um, Space War, I'll never get it right, we'll, we'll see it. Oh, yeah, I can see it already. You can see it here, you'll see it more in Space War. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why it looks like a radar screen. It is a it radar is a screen. Radar screen. <laughs> <laughs> This is Vinci drawn. Oh, that's cool. And it has a very interesting characteristic. It's, it's three dots that all have a relationship with each other. And that relationship starts out pretty stable. And as time goes on, uh, the dots get more and more unstable, uh, or the relationship gets unstable, until finally it just breaks down until right here. And then Boink. it changes. Well, that's kind of chaotic behavior. Isn't that a wonderful chaotic behavior? And then you really can see the, the two phosphors. Yes, you can. You can say very clearly where the, uh, the P7 persistence comes in. And you can also see it's a square within a round. Uh, yes. Uh, a yes, you can. And so most of those programs came from the MI the one that was installed at all MIT. Of these, all of these programs. Uh, just, just just see, that was part of the deal. DEC donated. PDP-1 to MIT. So, All right. Uh, oh, they, they gave it? They gave it to MIT. Uh, it it went psychedelic on me. <laughs> Isn't it cool? Yeah. It makes so many weird patterns. And it just keeps changing over time. It's just give a bunch of smart people a computer and look what comes out. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
getting weirder and weirder. Yeah, it is very weird. Yeah. Well, let me tell you, when we first uh, uh, got finished debugging uh, the PDP-1 and got the Model 30 running, um, the team could sit and watch something like this for an hour <laughs> because uh, we were so excited. Uh, I am tempted to run a one-hour video of <laughs> just that. And the other thing was that it, it did have a typewriter which, uh, with a piece of software, allowed you to do online debugging. It was the first symbolic debugger, and it was called DDT. So, uh, this is a dynamic debugger that's very similar to the stuff you would do actually on Linux. Okay. It was the grandfather, the great, 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 great grandfather of GDB in Linux. Okay. So, <laughs> so, so a slash means dump out a memory location. Okay. And then you can change memory and look at memory and so forth. Uh, and with the, uh, and now it's just, it's hung up. You can, you can tell the typewriter is not a totally happy creature. Oh, here, this is why it's unhappy. You tried to do two characters at once. Oh, like, <laughs> like the human operators. <laughs> That's right. There, there we go. go. So basically, uh, it's a, a, a weird debugging language. The, the next one is, is one of the most amazing of all. It's Space War for, uh, from our very own uh, Steve Russell. And actually, we even have the source code of Space War. As modify for the CHM, so Steve <laughs> kept working on it. So for it's, it's all assembly, instruction by instruction, so very efficient programming. Space this is all of Space War. This is all of Space War. 4K. All of, yes, Guys, all this of, is how everything should be programmed. Tell that uh, to the Microsoft here. That's right. Oh, it, it actually overflows the receptacle a little bit. Well, we've learned that if, if it doesn't start stacking right, just grab it with your hand <laughs> to get it out of the way. <laughs> Experienced operator here. All right, 4K is in the machine. 4K and there's and the, oops, and there's, there you go. It's go. space war. Space war cool. It's really the first uh, interactive uh, graphics game on a digital computer ever. Right, and then, and and it's such a good one. And uh, you guys have made boxes so we can play it. But there's enough about the game. That's good. Um, all right. Left for a thrust fire hyperspace. Oh, we're having a lot of fun with 1959 computers, so no, why should we go to our meetings? No, I'm talking about meeting <laughs> with Robert and Katharina. Okay. Okay. Oh, cool, because I have the. Here is the login screen. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm, that's the score that comes up. Okay, so after the shows that. They oh, get. so so you there's two rockets with different two, shapes. They're two different shapes. That's right. Okay, so I get this going. Any press any button. There you go. Okay. And that's thrust, 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 and it's just thrust. This way. And I want to fire that quickly. Ha ha! You got me! <laughs> <laughs> that was a cool one. It's just a nice, it's a very nice one. The graphics are great. The, uh, well, the it's, it's is using great. every every little bit of computer power that the uh, that the PDP one has to do this. Uh oh! Oh, you missed, you missed, you missed, you missed. Ah! 
come to the sun, or I work too. Oops. It's, it's just remarkable that they, they were able to fit that in, what, 12K? This actually fits in 4K. 4K, of me. Yes. Yes, isn't that amazing? That yeah, we should, we, should, we should have modern programmers just the program on this, and then I wouldn't need <laughs> like 15 gig or, or, right. or exactly. 4 gig just for the machine to exactly. start up office. Okay, this is close range combat. I got it, and I'm going to use it too. Oops, there's lots of bullets. Yeah, yeah. Well, except you could wipe it. Oh, you got me again, see? I did. Yeah, yeah, I, did. I think it was off screen, unfortunately. Out. Well, let's try it like this, see if I can do... No. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Alright. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> gotcha again. Yeah, you good. Your space. <laughs> uh, where I go? <laughs> I have just a slight advantage. I've <laughs> played this just a little bit more. <laughs> okay. I'll get there. Well, you start but, but, but. firing at the same time. Oh, you, you actually fire towards the sun, and you start... Oh, I, I got that. No, I got that wrong. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good game. The, well, it is a great game. What, what I find really amazing, Mark, is that... Well, I, I mentor high school kids and college kids, and I'll bring them here and we'll play Space War. And even though they have uh, PlayStation 4s and they have Xboxes, they will play for hours. And then you're talking and I got you. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not fair. That's not fair. Oh, wow. That is pretty impressive. Look at that. All hand wire, right? That's correct. You better not make a mistake in the thing. Well, they did make a mistake. They did. <laughs> One of the things that we did in the restoration, by the way, was that uh, two of us, Joe Frederick and myself, checked every connection in the machine with large magnifying glass by hand, every one of these connections. Wow. There were four bad connections oh. in the machine. And we don't know whether they were there from the factory when it was built, and they are uh -huh. always bad solder joints, uh -huh. or whether it happened because you know the machine got moved from uh -huh. the East Coast to the uh -huh. West Coast. So we'll never know why they were, the wires were you know, broken and loose. This is the other side of the machine uh, where we will see the cars, right? That's right. So the first thing you'll notice is the uh, the meter. My favorite meter here. Your, your favorite meter that says how many hours the machine has been running. Okay. It's 227.376.5. So 27,376.5. Since it's date of birth? Since it's date of birth. <laughs> then that, that opens up. You can flip it up. And this all opens up. And then, uh -huh. and then inside we have the, the logic for the memory. And then the actual core planes are, are here. So that's the, uh, the memory itself. That's the memory itself. There's uh, three banks of four kilowords of memory. Mm -hmm. And these are the sense amps for the memory. Uh -huh. And then a bunch of input-output uh, modules. Well, nicely done, actually. You want to see modules in the next one over? Sure. This is the margining supply for the machine. Okay. We're talking about margining. Oh, that's why you have before. the big voltmeter on it. Yeah, we have a, we have ability to change voltages and things. Okay. And then on the inside, this is the uh, the main brains of the machine. The logic for the central move processor. Move the lights a little bit. Oh yes, we can. Stuck. All as best I can do. So there are more of those. Very clean, actually. The yes, all the ones that have tags on them are ones that we have repaired the modules and uh, they they had bugs, so that uh, 
So how, how many bad cars did you find in the machine? Uh, not very many. We, uh, um, well, as you can see, there's there's only uh, what three here in this particular bank or four. Okay, so th those were bank. bad cards. Those those were all bad cards. It's a clean machine inside. Trying to get the light pen going, and it's a pointing device that you can put on the screen, and it has a photo multiplier tube in it that will uh, capture the light uh, that's submitted on the screen. And I guess by timing it, they know where you pointed. You made something happen, yeah? It just says that it's fine. It found it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That means found. Yes, I got that. So that's a diagnostic for the so pen. This is a diagnostic, so it right. says that the light pen. And, is and it, it, does it find it? That the, can you make it work again? Yeah, so now you can look over here. Cool. That, that's what the pen actually sees. That's what the pen actually sees. Oh, that's sees. cool. Is that cool? It sure is. So it's, it sees little pixels coming through. Yes. Ah, all right. That's a, so it's a photomultiplier array? It has no, it's a single, it's it's a a single a, one? It, it's a single one. Mm -hmm. So what happens is it displays uh, a point. Oh, in time. So the in other time. one is so time, it, right? It's, it's all time based, exactly. Right. So when, it, when, it, when the one point goes past the pen, uh, right. it says, oh, I got something. So you can try to draw something? It's a little hard to make it with one hand. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Wow. There you go. Drawing on the computer screen in 1959. 1959. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's actually pretty darn good. We, we, we ain't invented anything. Spectacular. Thanks, Lyle. You're welcome.